announcing new sanctions against Russia, a response to the death of opposition leader Alexei Navalny. President Biden has blamed Russian President Vladimir Putin for Navalny's death, and Mr. Biden met yesterday with Navalny's widow and daughter. CBS News White House correspondent Ejit Jang. Mr. Biden said these sanctions will ensure that Vladimir Putin pays an even steeper price for his aggression abroad and repression at home. They will target individuals connected to Navalny's imprisonment, and what the White House calls Russia's brutal and illegal war in Ukraine. One goal of these sanctions is to cripple Russia's military. So in new details, we're learning they target more than 500 companies, banks, and individuals inside and outside of Russia. With Russia's war in Ukraine approaching the end of its second year, Ukraine's army is facing shortages of equipment and supplies. CBS's Charlie Daggett says the country is also reeling from some recent battlefield defeats. <laughs> the fall of Avdika follows months of relentless bombardment and enormous losses on both sides. Ukrainian troops were overwhelmed and outgunned, and a commander said outnumbered seven to one. The Ukrainian military blamed the defeat on perilously low ammunition. It's become a grinding war of attrition. The Ukrainian government stopped sharing the number of its military dead long ago but the ever-growing number of fresh graves across the front lines tells a story in itself we've been in charleston south carolina this week ahead of tomorrow's republican presidential primary former president trump has about a 30-point lead in the polls over former south carolina governor nikki haley i think she needs to give it up because trump is so far ahead of her that woman is a trump supporter this haley backer says she's an important alternative to try to get people to work together to get things done instead of creating problems name calling i'm tired of it not everyone's made up their mind this voter in the capital columbia is still undecided i think i'd have to wait till i get the ballot box i'll be honest coastal carolina university political scientist justin vaughn says haley has been struggling to close the gap she's doing the rallies she's doing the media she has directly addressed growing questions about whether she'll drop out after likely not winning her home state. Certainly Governor Haley has been saying that she's in the race for the long haul, and really every presidential candidate says that until they're not. At least three in vitro fertilization providers in Alabama have now paused many of their activities in the wake of the state Supreme Court ruling that frozen embryos are legally considered children. Republican State Senator Tim Melson is working on a bill to try to protect the process. The lady right now that I met with has one child currently pregnant with a second, both by IVF, but she has two more waiting in a freezer for future use that she doesn't think she'll use. Now, she doesn't need to be charged with abandonment or manslaughter or, or anything because she decides not to use it. Israel's Prime Minister, who has committed his military to destroying Hamas in Gaza, is now talking about what happens once the fighting stops. CBS's Holly Williams. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has presented a plan for what comes after the war, including local officials in charge of public order, but no word on who they would be, while Israel maintains security control over the Gaza Strip. It's in contrast with what the US has long wanted, a two-state solution, including a Palestinian state in the West Bank and the Gaza Strip, with hopes it'll finally bring peace by giving Palestinians more control over their future and discouraging extremism. Time on the roundup, four minutes after the hour. Well, that's today's news, today's news. I didn't hear any good news, did you? I didn't think so. I guess it's all about perspective. The glass is half full. Well, as always, I'd like to thank you again for coming along with me on these Dash Cam News Adventures. You know the drill. Peace, love, and all that hippie jazz. Bye-bye, everybody. It's 55 degrees in Berkeley, California.